Welcome everybody to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Today we will talk about the Suitors of Helen and the famous Oath of Tyndareus. By the way, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so as to stay tuned for upcoming videos. In Greek mythology, the Suitors of Helen are those who came from many kingdoms of Greece to compete for the hand of the Spartan princess Helen, daughter of Zeus and Leda. Helen of Troy is arguably the most famous woman written about in Greek mythological tales. Here's was a face who launched a thousand ships. The amassing of an armada to bring back Helen from Troy was not just down to Helen's beauty, but had as much to do with the oath of Tyndareus taken by the suitors of Helen prior to her marriage. Some affirm that Helen was not a virgin when suitors from the whole of Hellas came asking for her hand. For Theseus, they say, had abducted her years before, fathering a girl Iphigenia, whom Helen handed over to her sister Clytemnestra when she came back to Sparta, having been rescued by her brothers the Dioscuri, who destroyed the city of Aphidna in Attica where Theseus had hidden her. But many others never cared about these rumors, finding this daughter of Zeus, who was hatched from an egg to be an unsurpassed beauty, and when because of her, war broke up, some aged wise men found it perfectly understandable that Achaeans and Trojans should slaughter each other for his sake, for to such an extent may sometimes wisdom submit to beauty. So when it became known that King Tyndareus of Sparta was offering in marriage, his stepdaughter Helen, prince and nobleman from the whole of Hellas came to win her hand. Already at this stage, it was feared that Helen could cause a war. And when Tyndareus saw the multitude of suitors, he feared that choosing one of them might provoke the others to start quarreling. Noticing his plight, Odysseus promised that if the king would help him to win the hand of Tyndareus' niece Penelope, he in return would reveal a way by which all trouble could be avoided. When Tyndareus accepted this bargain, Odysseus told him to exact an oath from all the suitors that they would defend and protect him who was chosen as Helen's husband, against any wrong done against him in regard to his marriage. The list of suitors, especially their number, varies depending which source you study, the three main sources being Homer, Hyginus and Apollodorus. The most noticeable suitors were Ajax the Great, Ajax the Lesser, Amphimachus, Antilochus, Ascalaphus, Diomedes, Elephenor, Evmelus, Idomenus, Machaon, Menelaus, Menestheus, Odysseus, Patroclus, Philoctetes, Protesilaus, Stenelus, Tefker, etc. The Oath of Tyndareus. This is how the Oath of Tyndareus came about, the suitors being sworn by the king and Odysseus receiving Penelope from Icarius, brother of Tyndareus. The ceremony was done in the place later called the Tomb of the Horse, on the road from Sparta to Arcadia, for before administrating the oath to the suitors, Tyndareus sacrificed a horse and after the suitors had been sworn standing upon the pieces of the horse, the animal was buried in the same place. What was the oath all about? Odysseus told Tyndareus that the king should extract from each suitor an oath that they would protect and defend whichever suitor of Helen was chosen. No hero of note would break such an oath, and even if someone did, then they would have to face the force of the other suitors who were bound to protect Helen's husband. It is also told that Tyndareus feared that Agamemnon might divorce his daughter Clytemnestra, and following Odysseus' advice, bound himself by an oath and gave Helen leave to choose a husband. And she chose Menelaus putting a wreath on his head. Later, when the seducer Paris came to Sparta and abducted Helen, taking her to Troy, the oath of Tyndareus was invoked by her husband Menelaus and his brother Agamemnon in order to form the coalition that sailed against Troy. But the oath of Tyndareus, through which Odysseus won Penelope, turned against its inventor, for now Odysseus was bound by the oath he himself had conceived to go to war. Furthermore, an oracle had declared that if he sailed to Troy, he would be away 20 years, and he would lose everything. So, being reluctant to join the alliance, Odysseus feigned madness, but Palamides, seeing through the deception, forced him to stop pretending and go to the war. Let us finish with the following saying. I think death is nothing more than the separation of two things from one another, soul and body, Plato. That being said, remember guys to hit the like button and to subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.